Oh, wait, wait. My producer is telling me that the reveal of the Kitsis Blue Shirt Vault will be happening in one minute. That's right, one minute till reveal. Financial technology is getting a lot of attention today, but behind every technology story are people working hard to help advisors build a better business. We're traveling across the country to meet those people and learn why they are dedicated to the success of advisors. These are the innovators, these are their stories. This is FBPAD Tech Tour. FP Pad Tech Tour is brought to you by Backstage Sponsors, InvestNet Tamarack, Orion Advisor Services, and Redtail Technology, with additional support provided by these roadie sponsors. As we make our way up the East Coast, we could not turn down the opportunity to meet with Michael Kitsis, a prolific contributor to the financial planning industry. We met at his home outside DC to talk about what drives him to create so many educational and business resources for financial advisors. So Michael, you and I go way back. We go about 10 years back from when we first met. Yeah, maybe, yeah, like 10 or 11, right? Because NextGen started 2004 and that was when we started to connect. And we met at the FPA conference in San Diego in 2005. Yep. yep. So here it is, wow. the summertime Time of flies. 2015. <laughs> and I'm sure advisors know you as a blogger, publisher of the Kitsis Report. They see you online at kitsis.com. They see you at conferences. I want to know why you are so passionate about empowering and educating advisors in this industry. Well, I, I mean, I guess it exists at two levels for me. I, I, th I think there's one that's just, you know, like I take very seriously what we do as planners. Like we have really significant impact to clients and what we do. And, and to me, that's a very sacred duty that we have. And, and it's frankly one that I think, just sort of as, as planners at large, not picking anyone in particular, um, I don't think we're terribly well equipped and trained to do it. Like we're, we're, we're doing something to me that is very much professional work mm -hmm. as a group that is still transitioning out from our roots as basically being a sales distribution channel for financial services products. And, and that transition from product distribution to bona fide advice and getting paid for advice just has a lot of changes attached to it. You, you need to change how you run your business if you want to actually do this effectively. You need to change your own skill set and capabilities. And, uh, and I guess to me at some level, like I, just, I, I, I want to be able to have impact on that. I want to be able to, uh, to have a role to play in that. And, and I think that's kind of the the second driver for it for me personally that we're all sort of put on this earth to do something and, and I, I guess what I figured out in the first seven or eight years of my career working within an advisory firm is that as, as proud as I am of the work that we do for our clients and our firm, it wasn't enough for me. Like it just, it didn't scratch that like deep internal itch that like, okay, I love that we're helping our hundreds of clients do well. Mm -hmm but I need to reach more people. I need to have more impact. I need to do something broader to, to kind of, to make it my legacy. And, and I think that like, that was sort of the most basic internal drive that kind of got me started in speaking and writing and the newsletter and then ultimately the blog, all of this, just this, like, I feel like I have something that to share that can be beneficial to people. And it's just not enough to me to only do that within our firm and for our clients. I, I certainly keep a role in our firm and try to do that there too, mm -hmm. but just it, it wasn't enough for me. Now, advisors are aware that you have many businesses that are advisor serving. There's yeah. a recruiting business, there's a new Gen X, Gen Y, the XY Planning Network business, yep. and a variety of other businesses. What I detect as the common thread for all of those is that they serve advisors. There's a mm -hmm. purpose that those businesses exist for the benefit of advisors. I want you to elaborate a little bit more on that, on why you're so dedicated to making advisors better. Uh, it's a good question. Like, just it's it's advisors are my world. These are my people. I, I I am an advisor. I came through as an advisor. To be fair, I don't spend a lot of direct time on client work at this point because uh, kind of life and business has got very busy. Mm -hmm. But like. It's just sort of my core for who I am at, at some level that like this is my identity and these are the people that I want to help. I want to help my peers. I want to help the community that I'm involved in. Uh, and and frankly, I think there's a part of it as well when, when we look at like that transition from being people that sell products to being people that run advice businesses. There's a lot of things that were done for us when we were in the business of selling products because 
you know, product manufacturers kind of want you to be successful so that you can right. go and sell their products. So sure. like the mothership provided a lot of things to support advisors. Mm -hmm. As we transition into advice businesses, which almost by their nature, by their definition, are gonna be more de independent because you're not gonna use a mothership in their products because you're right. creating this independent advice business. Right. There really wasn't a lot of infrastructure and system in place for independent advisors. I mean, we have some, we're not, like, it's not totally a barren wasteland, but the support structures are so less developed for advisors and people running independent businesses that, to, I guess, like, to me, from the business opportunity end, like, I just, I see never-ending stream of business opportunities for helping advisors just like, gee, we all struggle with this and no one helps us with this. Okay, well, then I'm going to make a business to do that. Yeah. And I, like, I think almost every one of the businesses I'm involved in basically comes from a discussion of, Geez, I feel like we have so, no solutions for blank. Someone should do that. And I said, Yeah, I that yeah, let's yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. And and uh, like truly, I I still have more business ideas than I have people to partner with to make them happen. Like just there there's so much that still needs to be done as we continue this progression from a, you know, a, a product sales based roots into a into a bona fide profession. So is there a typical day here at Nerd Headquarters, <laughs> yeah, or is nerd every day really uh, its own different unique day? There's a lot of area. I, I, I mean, I guess broadly speaking, like I can sort of carve days into, into three kind of general varieties. Uh, number one is frankly the days I'm not even here, so I'm, I'm out traveling for conferences. I'll, I'll clear 70 conferences this year, so I mean, I'm, I'm on the road a lot. Uh, fortunately, we're sitting here about 10 to 15 minutes away from Dulles Airport, right. East Coast hub for United. So me and United are uh, uh, really deep. So a big chunk of days, I'm just I'm I'm not here. Uh, the second chunk of days are essentially writing days for me. So mo most of my time when I'm not traveling, I'm actually working here from a home office and just doing my writing work. You know, the multi-screen setup and just my own little you know hermit's cove, so I can go and and write and mm -hmm. do my thing. And then kind of the third category days are, are basically other businesses days. So. I might just have a day's worth of meetings for some of the other businesses. I might have client-related activity to our advisory firm because I'm still a partner there and have some duties. It kind of flows that way. Like some weeks I've got three or four travel days and, and almost no time at home. Some days I've only got one or two travel days and I've got two or three at home. Some I've only got one travel day but then I've got one or two business days. You know, I pretty much always have to have at least one or two writing days a week just to just to kind of keep up with the flow of all the things that I'm writing and answer the ludicrously never-ending volume of emails that is kind of my world these these days I mm -hmm. uh, there's always a flow of email to get through that that's probably the one consistent thread to all of it now before we move on true to form you are wearing the official Kitsis blue that you're known for yes. your signature to and I would really love the opportunity to go up to your closet and okay. reveal to the world how many of these specific blue shirts how, does how Michael Kitsis really shirts, own. How many blue shirts are, are just sitting there in line? It's a lot. Uh, it's it's a lot. Well, you know, when I when I have travel stints where I go out for six to seven days at a time, like unless you're going to do a bunch of hotel laundering, which is kind of a pain, even for me because I'm going like one hotel the next. Like you really only have one solution. You got to have like a bag with six or seven shirts That's for a right. six or seven day trip and then sometimes I only come home for like a day in transition I've got to go out again and I can't always get all the washing done so you need some backups and as as you'll see there there are a lot of blue shirts it is born out of practicality absolutely I'm I am I am all about practical okay so let's go take a look all shall right, we all right absolutely as we descended on Michael's closet I could not resist but treat this moment like revealing a mobster's hidden vault. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bill Winterberg of FPPad.com. We are here in Northern Virginia. We are getting exclu- oh, wait, wait. My producer is telling me that the reveal of the Kitsis Blue Shirt Vault will be happening in one minute. That's right, one minute to reveal for the Blue Shirt Vault. So most people know Michael Kitsis is well known for his blue shirt uniform when he presents, when he's on camera, at all sorts of events. And everybody's wanted to know how many blue shirts does he actually own. So let's take a look inside the vault where all these blue shirts are. Isn't this exciting? This is incredible. Now in less than 30 seconds, we're going to go through the reveal. Now I'm gonna tilt up because you won't believe this. 
Look at this thing. It says Kitsis. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's get in real tight here. We've got one, two, three, four, five. They keep going. Six, seven, eight, nine, but wait, 10. We have him right Wearing in number the blue 10. shirt. Wearing, Wearing number, 10. number 10. So this is a world's first, ladies and gentlemen, live on Periscope. We have multiple camera setups here. The one, the only Michael Kitsis joining us, revealing how Welcome. many blue shirts you have. Ten, 10 blue shirts to manage all of the demands of travel. I must say, though, it has established a fantastic brand, fantastic rec Pure, recognition for purely you. Purely unintentional. You know, it's one of those, like, it starts as a joke and takes on a life of its own. But, um, yeah, the blue shirts, the 10 blue shirts, the, the blue Moto X, it's, uh, yeah, we're just, we're blue all around these days. <laughs> Somehow I think that's going to come up in an Arrested Development <laughs> episode. <laughs> But I must say, thank you for letting us in your, letting us inside your Absolutely. home here in Northern thank Virginia. You. Welcome everyone here on FP Pad Tech Tour, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's right. We have nine shirts up plus, here, plus, plus the one the that he has. I'm going to say, what was your second color choice? If you had a second color choice for your shirt collection, what would it be? A uh, second choice would probably be purple, like a deep, a deep purple. I like it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in on Periscope. We're going to get this footage there's, there's online so many, for you. There's so much camera action going great. on here. Let's see here. <laughs> there you go, right there. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. As you might expect, Michael had a flight to catch before our visit was over, so we joined him on the ride to Dulles Airport to learn the reasons behind why he spends a lot of his time on the road. Here we are in your Here car on the way to Dulles because on again, home airport. most advisors recognize you for the speaking that you do at conferences. Yep. You said you do about 70 conferences this yeah, year. It'll probably be a little over 70 this year. And so is travel something that you're passionate about? Do you feel that it's something you have to do now? Or you know, walk me through that. You know, travel honestly, like I'm, I'm actually a little bit mixed on it. Yeah, I, I really enjoy speaking. I really enjoy being at the conferences. I just, I, I love, I love talking with advisors. Like I just, I'm one of those people I will talk shop all day, all night. But at the end of the day, like, I'm a homebody introvert. Like, I, I don't actually relish the travel. There's really nothing fun about travel these days. And I've got family at home. I've got little ones at home. I've got two little girls that are, uh, at this point, three and a half and one and a half. And uh, and I want to be with them. I want to be home with them as, as much as I can around the, the travel that's kind of a part, mm -hmm. real part of my world. So, What do you think the opportunity is in the future when you reflect on the travel, but you think about the opportunities for online, social media, videos, podcasts? Tell me about what you think is going to happen with the Kitsis brand and the Nerd's Eye View brand for the future. Yeah, it's it's been an interesting evolution. So, uh, you know, there's no question that like the the blogging, the social media, and all of that has gone a long way to build the brand. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I'm actually coming up on the five-year anniversary for the blog, and and we'll be putting some uh, some material out, kind of tracking its growth. And the fascinating thing for me, like, you know, the the growth has been exponential for five years, mm -hmm. and my speaking business as a business has grown exponentially, almost perfectly in line and track with with the growth of the uh, uh, of the blog. So. You know, the, like the weird challenge. I mean, I, I I started the blogging and social media thing to try to get my content out there and, and get the uh, and get my brand out there. And and in some ways, it it, it really worked way better than I'd ever expected. It kind of grows exponentially. It, and it's and, worked super well. Yeah. So it like it's been an amazing growth uh, as a business. Like I'm. I'm I'm like a living testimonial to how well blogging and, and social media can work. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's actually got me traveling a little bit more than I want. So yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to rebalance that a little. I'd never get rid of the conferences and the travel because I just, I, I, I enjoy the, the actual speaking and interacting with advisors too much to, to get rid of that. I, you know, I may dial it down a little bit. I suppose at some point in the in the distant future, uh, we'll we'll get to a point where like hologram me can just be projected out to a conference, and I'll be like a 3D hologram speaking on site. But we're probably 10 years away from telepresence.
Legends kits is. Maybe, maybe. Um, so I, I think for, for me, to some extent, it's just a little bit of a rebalancing process right now. I think just trying to rebalance amongst those a little bit and, uh, and, and get a little bit less travel and a little bit more time on the road. But the amazing thing about blogging and, and social media, like it just, at some point it becomes this juggernaut machine that just starts to build on itself. And, and I'm, I'm certainly finding I'm at that point in the, in the growth curve right now. So I, I certainly want to keep nurturing that. That's kind of my, my core, my center, my home at this point as a, as a business. I guess it's kind of sad. The best thing I can come up with to do is to find more free time so that I can create more content to give away free for advisors and, and try to keep moving our world forward. But that, that's just kind of how I'm hardwired. I don't, I don't really know how not to do that yeah. at this point. I think, but that's a, a really unique part of what drives you and what makes you want to create yeah. more and more content for the benefit of advisors. Well, and, and it's and it's the fact that when you do this in a digital world, everything can be measured. Like I have to admit, there like there's a there's a feedback mechanism that occurs when you publish stuff in the digital realm, and then you can see almost immediately what's gaining traction and what's not, and what's drawing interest and what's not, and what's getting shared and what's getting out there and what's still popular days, weeks, months, years later. And, and you put it out there, I know immediately, and there's definitely this kind of addictive effect that comes off of it. Uh, and, and the more the platform grows and the more the audience grows, like just the more that fascinates me because the, the numbers start getting big at this point. Uh, and it's, it's amazing. But I, it's, it's good stuff. It's not the Buzzfeed for advisors. It's not the viral no, stuff no, for advisors. No, no, yeah, you're like, it's actually really good stuff. An advisor said something to their client. You won't believe what happened next. No. Like, uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm in this for the long run. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in it as an, uh, in, in, working with advisors and building my businesses for the long run. So I just, I have zero interest in doing something that, you know, takes advantage of people's trust yeah. uh, just to get a cheap click. And, and like, frankly, that's the nice thing about the business model that I I run as a, as a person that, that writes. Like, I don't get paid for page views. I don't get paid for advertising clicks and impressions. It's not how I run my business. So I don't, yeah. I don't have to deal with that fundamental conflict of interest. That's really a challenge for media publications. You know, you can write good, technically accurate headlines and you get paid less, or you can write Buzzfeed style clickbait headlines and you make more money. And, and that's a tough conflict of interest going through that. So that becomes part of the dynamic and the challenge as well is, is just how to, uh, how to balance that effectively and and fortunately i don't have to deal with that challenge because i don't get paid by advertisers that's not my business and before we said goodbye to michael i made sure i asked him for his support for the work performed by the foundation for financial planning so michael one of the last things that i want to ask you is fppad tech tour is not only about collecting these stories of people who are helping advisors move forward, but it's also a fundraiser for the Foundation yep. for Financial Planning. So we're asking everyone we see on the road, can you support the Foundation for Financial Planning and make a contribution to the Foundation? Oh, absolutely. I've been a supporter for the Foundation, I don't even know how long, five or six years now at least. Love, love the mission and what they do. You know, they're really the only they're really the only organization directly dedicated to pro bono, pro bono financial planning that, that for financial planning, like tied to our financial planning profession, they're kind of their, they're the profession's foundation. So, uh, long standing supporter, happy to support again as, as part of uh, FP Pad Tech Tour as well. Terrific, Michael. Absolutely. Thank you for, for your pleasure. support, and I know the foundation appreciates your support. Absolutely. On the next episode of FP Pad Tech Tour. And that comes off pretty easy? Yeah. You sure about that? <laughs>why you've progressed to be <laughs> welcome welcome to the Washington outdoors that's that's going to be a great preview <laughs>